What's up you guys? My name is Aubrey and this is my channel and today I want to talk about investing because the way that the current economy, the current stock market, the current real estate market, the way the world is as we sit here today in March and April of 2021, it can sometimes be very difficult to figure out where you should invest your money because it seems like everything is very high and everything is in a bubble. So in this video, what I want to talk about is some alternative investments that you can make. These are investments that you can pursue if you're somebody who's looking for an ROI but may not be interested in taking the risk that is associated with some more traditional investments. So let's get started. We are in a massive multi-niche and multi-industry bubble right now. The real estate market is incredibly hot right now and it's very difficult to find any rental property or any real estate property that is priced at a half decent price. In fact, there are so many reports that I've seen online of houses getting like hundreds of offers in a matter of hours. And this is a standard that is being seen across the entire country. It's absolutely crazy. So real estate is incredibly expensive to get into. Cryptocurrency is incredibly high, and in my opinion, it's due for a correction. I have crypto, I don't plan on selling that, but at the same time, I do expect for it to go down again before it goes up any significant amount. At the same time, I think things like NFTs, which is non-fungible tokens, which is just this entire thing that I can make a video about in itself, is a big sign that the crypto market is in a bubble, and I think that this will pop at some point in the near future. Alternatively, I think the stock market is something that is incredibly lofty right now. Now, the fact is none of these three things are like doomsday waiting to appear. I wouldn't say that any of these things are things that we should really be worried about, but it does make me want to second guess putting any more money in these investments. I'm definitely gonna hold off on buying any real estate, which for a long time was on my to-do list for 2021. I'm not gonna be investing any more in the stock market because I feel as though my portfolio is at a level I feel comfortable with, and I don't wanna put any more into it until we see a little bit of an uptick from where we are now. Alternatively is crypto. And I do have crypto investments, but I don't plan on making any more in the future. I'm gonna wait for the bubble to burst and see if it bursts before adding any more money into crypto. But whenever we take away three very popular investment vehicles, it leaves people asking the question of, well, where should I invest my money? And that's what I wanna talk about today because the fact is, even though I don't know if it advised to invest in real estate, the stock market, and cryptocurrency as we sit here today in March and April of 2021, I do think there are some really great investments that you can pursue in the meantime. Number one is to pay off your debt. This is such an underrated investment that more often than not isn't even viewed as as an investment. But the fact is paying off your debt is 100% an investment and more often than not, it will pay you a higher ROI than a lot of more traditional mainstream types of investments. Depending on what type of debt you have, paying off your debt can sometimes yield a ROI of between 20 and 30%, sometimes more depending on what type of loans and what type of debts you have in your name. The fact is by paying off debt, you gain that ROI on a yearly basis instantly. And so even though things like investing in the market, investing in real estate, buying crypto, or things that are oftentimes considered popular and smart investment moves, none of these are as smart or as advantageous or have the ROI that paying off your debt does. In my opinion, paying off your debt is one of the best things that you can do as far as an investment standpoint. Now there are of course kind of exceptions to the rule. If you're somebody that has a vehicle with 0% interest, if you have a really great interest rate on your house, in these types of cases, it probably doesn't make sense rushing those payments down. But if you're somebody that has credit card debt, if you're somebody that has a high interest vehicle loan, if you're somebody that has a personal loan, these are all examples of debts that you should work towards paying ASAP because the ROI that you would make from paying off those debts will be significantly higher than almost any other investment that you can make in present day. The second alternative investment that you can make is investing in physical products or physical collectibles. Now this is something that is very tricky and I did a lot of research on collectibles and trying to figure out which ones would be good investments and which ones wouldn't be, but the fact is nobody really knows. I mean, if you would have told me in 2020, Pokemon cards would gain mainstream media attention and be grossing hundreds of thousands of dollars for certain types of cards, I would have told you that you were crazy. And I think that a lot of people would agree. The fact is the collectible market is one that is very hard to predict, but there are some trends that you could follow to try to point you in the right direction of what types of collectibles would be worth investing in. Number one is old technology. Old technology has proven time and time again to be worth something at some point later on in the future. Now I'm not talking about any type of collectible or any type of old technology. You definitely have to stick to a certain niche. 
Now recently, a Walkman was auctioned off on eBay for $800, and you could kind of take the same type of thought process with the current technology that would be considered similar to a Walkman. For example, an iPod or an iPod Shuffle or the original iPod could all be good investments to make for the future. If not technology, then you can look towards other investments as well. Things like designer shoes, designer handbags, designer clothings. These are all things that could potentially be worth more later on down the road than they are in present day. Or thirdly, you can look for something that maybe you're interested in that you know way more about than I do and try to find a very niche type of collectible that you can start investing in. For example, I recently stumbled upon a TikTok of a woman who was showcasing her like figurine horse collection. And these horses were worth in some cases, 200 to $1,000 each. And this person had like dozens of them. The fact is there are collectibles all over the place and whatever you're interested in, you could probably find a like sub niche within that interest in order to invest in and get collectibles for that type of interest. You could do coins, you could do ceramic horses, like what I mentioned earlier, you could do action figures, comic books, gaming cards, whatever the case is, there are a ton of different opportunities out there in order to invest in whatever you're interested in. The important thing is to do your research, to make sure that you buy from a reputable source and that you keep those items, those collectibles in pristine condition, because that's what's gonna really matter later on down the road. Number three is to not invest in a product, but instead invest in a revenue stream. This is something that I am personally a really big proponent of. About one year ago, I made my very first video talking about the stock market. And in that video, I talked about how I consider myself to be an opportunistic investor. Now, what I mean by that is that I don't really have any sort of blueprinted investing strategy. Instead, what I do is I just follow the atmosphere, follow what's going on in the world, and I invest accordingly. For example, in 2020, I invested a ton in the stock market because that's what it made sense to do at the time. Before that, I invested a ton into Turo because that's what it made sense to do at the time. Before that, I invested into a franchise because that's what it made sense to do at the time. And sitting right here in spring of 2021, I don't know that the stock market, crypto, or real estate are the right investment vehicles for me given present day. And because of that, instead of investing into assets and instead of investing into investments, I'm pivoting my investment strategy into reinvesting into my revenue streams and into my income streams. And I'm gonna be buying more cars for Turo. I'm investing into better equipment for the YouTube channel. That way I can increase my income rather than increasing my investment portfolio. But you can implement this exact same thing in your personal life as well. Rather than putting money into the stock market, you could invest into a car that you can list on Turo. Or instead of putting money into cryptocurrency, you can invest in getting your car fixed so that you can drive for DoorDash, Uber, Lyft, those types of services. You could invest in some like niche piece of equipment so that you can start a side hustle. You could invest in marketing costs so you could start a business. There are honestly so many different ways that you can start an income stream. And if you have money to invest in the income stream, it will make it that much easier to get started and to start making an ROI on that investment. Honestly, I think that investing into an income stream is the best way to invest your money because of the fact that not only allows for you to increase your income and the amount of money you're bringing in, it helps you grow as a business person and just as a person in general, and it also can help you open doors to other opportunities as well. This can provide you with so much more growth, so much more opportunities and just putting money into the stock market. And because of this, if you're somebody who's looking to increase your income, if you're somebody who's looking to open some new doors, this is the best way to invest invest your money, not only in kind of an economically shifty time, like what we're experiencing now, but even during economic flourishment, I think that this is a great, great path to pursue. And if you guys want to learn how you can create an income stream, either with limited investments or no investments at all, then I do have a ton of videos talking about the subject. So go head onto my channel, make sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell so that you check all of the future videos I've made on this topic, but you can find them in the playlist section of my channel as well. The next investment that you should consider if you're somebody who's looking for alternative investment choices and investment vehicles is to invest in yourself. And I know what you guys are saying, that is the most cliche advice anybody could ever give. And you know what? You're kind of right. It is super cliche for me to give this piece of advice, but the only reason why it's cliche is because of the fact that it's true. I would say the order of like best investments go investing in yourself, investing in an income stream, and then investing in more traditional investment vehicles like stocks, real estate, crypto, and so much more. 
The fact is investing in yourself is going to pay you the highest ROI that you can possibly imagine. And the best part is in some cases you can invest into yourself without actually investing any money by simply just investing your time. I will give you guys the perfect personal example. I started this YouTube channel in January of 2020 and I started it because I was tired of hearing the excuses that I was making for myself. You see, before I started this channel, I had wanted to start a channel for like four or five years. And I never did it because of the fact that I just simply kept making excuses. I was nervous about what the response would be. I was nervous about putting myself out there. I was anxious about being on camera. I didn't know how to edit. I didn't know how to film. I didn't know what to talk about. All of these things are excuses that came up as to why I didn't start my YouTube channel whenever I originally came up with the idea to do it. And then in January of 2020, I finally did it because I told myself, okay, I'm gonna invest in myself. I'm gonna invest and dedicate myself to the time that is required for me to start a YouTube channel. I'm gonna dedicate a year to this. I'm gonna invest my time, my energy, my effort into this and ultimately the ROI that I got from that investment was huge. It was way more than I could have ever anticipated or way more than I would have ever expected. The ROI that I received by investing into myself for this YouTube channel is an ROI that I would have never been able to receive from any other investment that exists out there. But the fact is investing in yourself isn't just limited to like the surface level topic that I've discussed here of like investing into an income stream or YouTube channel. The fact is investing in yourself comes in so many different forms and so many different examples from getting healthy, getting fit, running a marathon, to learning a new language, learning a new skill, starting new habits, starting better habits. There are so many different ways you can go about investing in yourself. And even though the physical like ROI money wise may not always pay out as much as like the stock market would, the ROI that you would receive from just self help and personal growth will far exceed any money that you would get from like a thousand dollar stock market investment. And because of that, I think that this type of investment is a really great investment to take part in, especially if you're somebody who's wanting to grow and expand your horizons and improve certain aspects of your life. I think that this investment is far better than any crypto, real estate, or stock market investment that you can make in spring of 2021. Ultimately though, you guys, the reason why I wanted to make this video is because the fact of the matter is the stock market is a mess right now. It's been going down like crazy and then I'll have up days and I'll have down days. And I feel as though whenever these types of things happen, a stock market correction, I feel like it's very easy to get kind of feeling like all loom and doom about what's going on. And the fact is the sky isn't falling. The stock market is just going down a bit. And just because the stock market may not be the best investment vehicle right now, doesn't mean there aren't other investments that you can pursue that are either equally, if not more advantageous than the market. The market has its ebbs and flows and it's up to us as investors to adjust to those ebbs and flows and pivot our investment strategy accordingly. And I think that these investment strategies that I've discussed in this video do just that. Like always, you guys, if you have any questions, comments, if you have anything to add, I would love to hear your thoughts. So make sure to leave a comment down below. And while you guys are at it, make sure to hit the like button, hit the subscribe button and hit that notification bell. And I will see you guys in the next video.